now we need to talk about something called significant figures. When I measure something, I want to know how accurate it is. And I know a lot of people are used to saying, well, I measured it to the nearest thousands or the nearest uh, two thousands. But if you're measuring in lots of different units, not just inches, for example, then you need to know how accurate the darn thing is. And thousands in inches is different in different units. So what scientists generally do is they measure in terms of, well, what they always do is they measure in terms of significant figures. This is the number of digits they actually measure. Let's focus in on, uh, on this stick here for a minute. I'll put it up there. Now notice, if I measure something and it's say, this long, I could say, well, it's about one, two, three, four, five centimeters long. About five. But five could be anywhere between four and a half and five and a half. Maybe I could measure it to the nearest millimeter. Well, I've looked at this, so it's about, it's about uh, five centimeters. But if I look very closely, I can see that I can get it down to 5.2 millimeters. 5.2 centimeters, excuse me, because it's two tenths of a, if I can zoom in more. Yeah, about 5.2. All right. 5.2 centimeters. Well, that's more accurate. All right, and this is one digit that I measured. Here I've measured down to two digits. Now, if it was right on five and I measured it to the nearest millimeter, I could say, well, that's 5.0 centimeters. Even though it's straight up five still, I measured that zero, and so I get credit for it. That's two significant figures. So you want to measure things as well as you can. You want to measure them down to the nearest significant figure. And when you combine them, you've only got a right to keep the value uh, where of the, well, the significant figures of the output have the same number of significant figures as the value that had the, the least accuracy. Because that's what, uh, that's what uh, gives you the worst, that's the weak link, if you will. Let's try, um, let's see, let's try this. We'll do a circle. I'll give you my best circle. Now, this circle, it's got a diameter of about, I don't know, I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing it's a diameter of about five centimeters. So let's write that. D equals five centimeters. I don't know if it's 5.1 or 4.9 or even somewhere, I know it's somewhere, I assume it's somewhere between four and a half and five and a half. I know it that well, but I don't really know it any better than that. I only know the diameter of this circle to one sig fig, one significant figure. So let me find the circumference of the per circle. Now, here's the, here's the rule for the circumference of a circle. I call it big C for the circumference. The circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. All right. So I want to know what the diameter of the circle is. Now you can see if, if I don't know this diameter any better than within one centimeter, I'm not going to know this circle any better than one centimeter at the best, right? Well, let's write it out. Pi times the diameter is, well, pi is about uh, 3.14, times the diameter, which is five centimeters. 
Oh, how good's my answer going to be? Well, phew, this could give me a really uh, a lot of numbers, right? But really, my answer, the best I can do is pretty much 5 times 3 is 15, which is close to 20 centimeters. I don't know it any better than that because I've got some great numbers right here. I've got a lot of numbers with pi, but this right here, the 5 centimeters, that's what limits it. With only one significant figure, that's the weak link. That tells me I'm not going to know it any better than one significant figure. 20 centimeters. 3 times 5 is 15, but that rounds to 20. So I only have a right to one significant figure there. Let's try another example. Well, I'll, try, I'll show you a few examples. 